Welcome to Fitness First. My name is Elena, the Trainer Diva, and I have a very special guest with me today. Sitting beside me is the lovely Marie Stavros. And I have known Marie for a couple of months. She has helped uh, Trainer Diva uh, during the summer uh, with our nutrition program. And she's my go-to nutrition gal. Um, she has been a nurse for 30 years, specializing in home health care. And also she is a certified health and wellness coach so she is like I said my go-to gal for nutrition and March is actually national nutrition month so I thought we would start off March with a really great kind of informative series about clean eating and um, I've mentioned clean eating before in the past but we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into today's segment into how you can really make this work for your life. Um, we're all about like that practical application, um, something, you know, maybe we say something today that like really like clicks on a light bulb or something that you're like, hey, I can, you know, I can do that. So really just kind of absorb the information. We're also doing this in preparation for our 10 week summer slim down challenge that's gonna be happening at the end of March. So we're really excited to launch that. So this is a really great kind of video primer for anything and everything you need to know about clean eating. So Marie, we're gonna talk about clean eating. Now, first of all, what exactly is clean eating and uh, what are kind of the, the basics? Uh, <coughs> excuse me, there are different definitions that float around about what clean eating is. And for me, the way that I like to explain it is that it's the choice to eat foods closest to their original state minimal or no processing to something, food as it was intended to be consumed. Right. Um, things, that, uh, things that you can pick up and combine and turn them into a meal. Clean eating would be things that don't have um, additional ingredients to them. An apple is an apple. Right. You, it, it is what it is. But right. You can turn it into something different and delicious and it can, you can create a wonderful meal around that or some solid vegetables that whether it's peppers or zucchini, add garlic to things, that those are one ingredient foods. Right. Foods that don't have those unrecognizable ingredients. Right. And so if I am in the grocery store right. and I pick up a lean cuisine, yeah. that would be an example of non clean eating. Right. That's, so that's like the other extreme yeah, of what we're talking about. It here. really is. It really is. And and I've been guilty of that myself in the past. And then you, you really look at the back of that package and right. you read it. <laughs> and after the first few ingredients you look and you go, Well what does that say? I've never seen that before. Right. If you can't really recognize what it is, it's not really a food and it's not really something that's gonna give your body any benefit. And, and a lot of those foods, they have those kind of like preservatives in them, they so they're going to kind of slow you down, and, and I know we're going to talk about like how clean eating will make you feel, yeah, too, on the inside. Sure. So, so there's also kind of a big debate or discussion about if I'm eating clean, mm -hmm. do I need to eat organic? No, you really don't. You can eat clean, I mean, in a, in a perfect scenario go for it. As much organic as you choose to, as you want to, as you're able to. It can get expensive. Right. I'm in the grocery store and uh, an organic pepper is three dollars for one pepper. Right. That's an expensive pepper. Right. So <laughs> right. I may make the choice to buy a pack of peppers that are three dollars for a pack of them and take them home and do a really good job cleaning them right. as best that I can. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also going to probably cook them or I'm going to do something different. Um, organic is not an essential piece to clean eating, um, but it is a good combination. So that if you're going to pick a few things to buy organically, right. maybe organic chicken right. is a good choice. Mm -hmm. Chicken tends to be a lean protein, which is a wonderful piece of your meal right. um, and a wonderful thing to incorporate in a lean diet while you're trying to eat better things and things that are going to help you. Right. Um, 
But you look at some of the chicken in the grocery store, and it is this plump, right. big, and you right. realize that's not really probably what it looked like right. on the chicken. Right. So, right. Um, so take a look and take five minutes to stand there and literally compare what one package says to another versus the other. Yeah, and, and that may be the place to, to put your money, your organic fund. Right. would be into chicken. Into chicken. Or into milk or into some of your um, more popular fruits like apples. Mm -hmm. um, an yeah. apple is something you could, you know, this is a great on-the-go, clean choice for a snack. Um, and fills you up and gives you, that would be a great organic choice if it's gonna be a daily thing that you're gonna eat. Yeah, and I think you make a good point though too that it doesn't have to be like all or nothing. I think some people kind of approach clean eating in that way. Yeah. So it's it's good that if, you know, I, I only, I have a certain budget that I'm gonna spend right. on my groceries right. this week and sure. I know that I can, you know, I'm gonna definitely have uh, ch like a chicken stir fry or something, I'm gonna go for the organic section on that one. Or if I like bananas, maybe I can do the non or right? So exactly. Because you peel, you're off peel the, that off, you're going to get good banana inside. Uh, can I ask a question? I know it's really Here we go. Yeah. It's early question time. <laughs> or, organic. And you may, have called, you may have said it, but one of the other hosts were texting me. But, you know, what's organic? I mean, or is it the way they grow it? Or is it, you know, what makes it organic? Traditionally, if we're talking about fruits and vegetables, it's the way it's treated while it's growing. Okay. It's the soil. It's the um, way that the farmer uh, treats the crops while they're growing. It's what they put on the fruits and vegetables to keep insects off and, and animals away. Um, so there are a lot of organic farmers out there that do a wonderful job at that. One of the, one of the concerns you'd have, and I've seen this recently in some articles I've read, has to do with runoff from other farms that may be up the hill and up the so way. Don't you don't CSI. know, so I don't see a side. Yeah, I got killed because of that. Well, see, there you the go. Well, there that. you go. So you don't really know what's happening as the water kind of trickles down from one patch of grass and ground to another. Right. So, so an organic farm, an organic gardener is going to do everything in their power to keep the negatives off of their crop. Okay. And when you're talking about meats, it has to do with the feed. It has to do with what the animals are given, how they're raised. Are they in an open space? Are they able to run free? They should be. That would be better as opposed to caged animals, like caged chickens. Um, yeah. So that, that, so that gives you some idea. It has to do with the processing and how, they're, how it grows okay. yeah. and how it's treated and how it's treated. Yeah, and I think kind of getting back to how to make clean eating a part of my life, uh, what are some of the common myths that you've heard or encountered in your in your work that that are kind of maybe people don't try clean eating because oh I heard you have to be a vegan to be clean. Yeah. So what what yeah. are some of the, the absolutely not? I mean to 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 eat in a clean way. Um, really just means that you're taking the processed piece out of your diet. Right. Clean eaters eat meat. You can be a beef eater and a chicken eater and have all the things that you want, but know where it came from. Know the origins of your food. Mm -hmm. Know the way that that particular producer produces it. And in doing that, you're incorporating a clean choice. Right. Um, and People do get overwhelmed. You said earlier about all or nothing. Right. Nothing is all or nothing. I don't think it's realistic in this right. life, in right. this in this world, to be able to do everything one way all the time. I think it's important to forgive ourselves when yes. the only thing, the only choice I have is to go available to available food because this day that's all I had. Right. Um, so it takes practice and it takes preparation. Yeah, and I think that's the key though too. And I say this, I say this to a lot of my, my clients as well. Uh, the same thing goes for fitness. Like, if you're, if you're prepared for your meals for the whole week, you're going to prepare for success, right? Right. Same thing, like, you're scheduling when you're going to do your training session, you're preparing yourself for success. Like, you're setting yourself up 
to succeed exactly versus setting yourself up to fail basically. exactly because when you're starving and you come home from work and you don't have anything in your refrigerator what's right. going to happen you get the food and it's right. like take out time exactly so then, i say this to my family all the time <laughs> um i will i will consistently say please go to the refrigerator for your snack before the pantry right make the refrigerator the first place you start that's great Ooh, yeah. i like that do you like that yeah, yeah, yeah i like, like that, that. Yeah, um, that's good Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad I said that. Um, and, and, yeah. and, and it takes practice. Mm -hmm. It takes preparing. It takes actually making that grocery list. Yes. And, and having stable things so that if you know your family loves certain combination of fruits and vegetables, always have them in the house. Right. Don't, don't think you have to be going off grid all the time. Like get into a habit of there are certain things on my grocery list every single week. Those are the things I want to have. I want to have them available. Right. Maybe I can't plan. I don't plan my meals five days out. Okay. Some people are wonderful at that. I am not. Yeah. I cook on the fly. Okay. So that's. Let me. Let me just stop you right yeah. there, though. So that I think, in and of itself, coming from a nutrition and wellness coach who is not planning her meals, that makes that I know for me that makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I don't have to like do five days. So, but you bring up a good point though, if you have things in your refrigerator or your pantry, you have things that are good, then, mm -hmm. then you don't necessarily have to decide out. on Monday what you're going to eat on Thursday. Right. And exactly. maybe Thursday's meal won't appeal to you on Thursday. Right. So, exactly. for me, my freezer will have lean meats in the freezer. So I'll have my lean chickens and I'll have fish in my freezer. In my pantry, I will have the staples that I might want to add, quinoa and brown rice and whole wheat or multi-grain pastas. Um, and then in the refrigerator are the fruits and vegetables and the other things that I use to enhance the meal. Right. And, uh, and if you get into that practice, it becomes easier and easier and easier. Exactly. It really does. And then the beauty of that is the whole leftover thing where you can combine Right. You had more vegetables on Monday night than you thought. Well, then that becomes the ingredient to an omelet the next day. Exactly. So you find a way to not waste mm -hmm. when you're eating clean because you can rework something another day. Yeah, absolutely. Because then there's there's a million other ways that you can repurpose absolutely. vegetables. And here's the thing, and I know yeah. this. When I have conversations with people, yeah. I kind of I get laughed at sometimes. I love to cook. I'm a foodie. It, it relaxes me. Mm -hmm. And I know there are people out there that are like, really? Yeah. <laughs> it relaxes you? Right. It just does. It's yeah. a, a de-stressor for me. For mm -hmm. other people, it is the stress. It is. Okay. So I get that. Mm -hmm. So keep it as simple as you can keep it. You don't need 15 ingredients in a meal. Right. Exactly. No, I think that's perfect. Well, we're going to take a short commercial break. And then when we come back, we're going to continue our conversation with Marie on clean eating. And also we're going to talk about if you're traveling a lot, how does that incorporate into your clean eating lifestyle? All right. So be right back. This guy's a pro, Herbie. There's no doubt about it, Brent. A real gatekeeper. Here's Kevin, the new boyfriend, lamb to the slaughter. That's right, Brent. Mom's baked cookies, but he'll be lucky to make it inside. And here's the play. Ooh, Dad did not see this coming. Now if Kevin can just seize the opportunity. It's looking good, Herbie. He's seen it. It's all over. Nothing but daylight. Yes, I love a cookie. Make a powerful first impression. The all-new Nissan Sentra. So I'm here again with the fabulous Murray Staffers, and we are talking about clean eating today and how we can incorporate this into our healthy lifestyle. So uh, kind of touching on what we were uh, talking about before is how, uh, especially if you're on the go and you're busy, you travel a lot for work, how can you incorporate clean eating into your lifestyle? If I'm constantly eating out at restaurants, what are some ways, like some quick tips that you can give us um, if I'm eating out and there's no other choice that I have, right. what can I do to still <clears throat> maintain that clean eating? Well, I think it's important to really focus on what the menu looks like, uh, no matter where you are. Um, uh, restaurant owners, chefs, people that own restaurants, they're looking to please their customer. They want you to come back. So don't be intimidated to change up a recipe. If you see something on a menu and it's uh, appealing to you except it's covered in a cream sauce and you love it without the cream sauce, can they put oil on that instead or vinegar or a, uh, 
a just leave that the sauce off. When they leave the sauce off for me, almost all the time you will get a yes or let me check with the kitchen and see if they can do that. Right. And if they can't, they will frequently come back and offer you, well, we can't really do it with that one, but this one's similar and it has a lighter sauce to it. Mm -hmm. Ask them to half the sauce. Um, uh, so take a look at the things that are broiled and baked instead of fried. And fried. For and sure. And grilled too. Grilled for sure. Grilled Absolutely. Is grilled okay. is great. So let's say, and I do this all the time, let's say that you're going to go for the salad and you need a protein. Right. Well, in a lot of menus these days at the bottom, they see what you can, for an additional couple of dollars, you can add X, Y, or Z. Right. So you add grilled chicken to an existing salad, that's a phenomenal meal. Right. It's not a salad anymore, it's your meal. Right. Salmon is a common one to add to a salad. Um, and the thing about salads has to do with the dressing. You can put a lot of vegetables in a bowl and they can be extraordinarily healthy for you. But the minute that you douse it in that delicious creamy Italian dressing, <laughs> you've destroyed the choice to right. have a clean right. salad. Right. So then a, a choice instead of that would be to do like the oil, balsamic vinegar that's on the table right. already and right. kind of like make your own yeah, little sure. dressing. Ask them to so, bring vinegar and oil, um, or ask them to put the dressing on the side. Always go for the vinaigrettes over the creamy dressings. And honestly, add half of what you're brought, because you really don't need as much as they traditionally will give you. Yeah. They give you more than you need to be sure you have enough. Exactly. Which you have more than enough. There. Right, and, and I think that you bring up a good point about just the portion size mm -hmm. overall in yeah. restaurants is phenomenally huge. It's ridiculous. So, and maybe if you're with a coworker or you know, somebody else in your party, mm -hmm. you maybe want to like split something. If something comes out that's like totally gigantic, Absolutely. maybe like half it. And I've, I'm sorry. I'm no, no, go ahead, go ahead. I have frequently had that experience with friends. I'm out with friends. I'm out with my husband or one of my daughters. And um, I will ask the waitress, how large is that portion? And they'll say, oh, it's pretty big. Right. Can we split it? And they will bring it to you on two plates. They will take the one entree so that you're not eating off each other. Right. <laughs> that weird some people yeah. out. Um, right. They'll actually split it out for you. So now you've taken one meal that was way too much for one person and they've turned it into two. Exactly. And and, and I think that's something that we kind of forget mm -hmm. because either we go to a restaurant and we're just starving or like, I don't care, I'm just going right. to have everything that they bring out or to take me. The so. other half home. Exactly. It yeah. becomes a meal for that on the go busy person the doggy next day. day. Yeah. Doggy bag it, for Perfect. sure. So I also want to touch on um, kind of going back to grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. Um, I talk about grocery shopping all the time with my clients and how important it is to get your list and, and, and kind of stick to it. What is a good tip on how to go about your grocery shopping? Is there like a couple like quick tips you can sure. give us on yeah. um, how to get that done? Yeah. Um, most of us that we do the primary grocery shopping for our families, we know the grocery store in our heads. We know where things are, what the aisles are, and you make your list in that order traditionally. Mm -hmm. It makes things more efficient for sure. Try your best to shop the perimeter of the store first. Fill your basket with things that need refrigeration because then you're getting things that are the freshest. Right. So starting your produce, um, which is traditionally the beginning of a grocery store anyway. Starting your produce section and really take take a few extra minutes to really explore what are the colors here? What kinds of things can I incorporate? Can I try something new for my family this week? Maybe my family's never tried yellow squash. We've always had green zucchini. Well, let me throw a little yellow squash in there and try something different. So you start in the perimeter. You've got your fruits and vegetables. You go to your meats in the refrigerated section and then you find your way to the dairy section. You find your way to skim milks or lighter milks and your yogurts and the things that you're going to choose. Right. When you're making those choices, don't always look for low fat or non-fat. Okay. Low fat's fine. Non-fat, the trick usually is, is higher in sugar uh, because when they extract the fat, yeah. frequently when you read the back of the label, mm -hmm. there's more sugars in the low fat version of, or the non-fat version, I'm sorry, okay. than the low fat. So when they take out the fats to enhance it, there are usually more sugars. Interesting. So take a okay. look at those kinds of things. Take that extra few minutes to read labels, to know what you're eating. After you've done your perimeter, the things that are in the middle aisles, the boxed items, the things you want the least amount of, yeah. then you go for that. Mm -hmm. Pick and choose, uh, you know, a number of years ago when they started to introduce whole wheat pastas, 
that's all there was. And it was either white pasta or really heavy cardboard-like pasta, <laughs> which was really hard. To, I didn't like it. Yeah, yeah. But no. now when you yeah. stand in the traditional grocery store and the pasta aisle, there are 20 different choices for how you can cut back on the denser white pasta. The denser. So there's lots of yeah. other choices out there than there used to be. What is that? Talk to me about the freezer section though, because I know I'm guilty of this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is a bad thing or not, but I do like to get some frozen veggies. Like frozen veggies are absolutely perfect. They're because fine. because sometimes I feel that if I'm getting like the the, the fresh, which I know I should be getting all the time, is like the fresh mm -hmm. uh, produce. Right. But then once I get into the free, I'm like, oh well, I can just pop these in the. Here's the interesting thing about that, and this is a this is a big one for me as well. Yeah. I think that if you're going to be a clean eater, you eat in season mm -hmm. as best you can. Right. Clearly, in New Jersey, in January and February, there's not a whole lot growing, especially this <laughs> no, year. Especially no, especially this not, year. Not this year. So we have to rely on what's imported and what's brought in. Mm -hmm. So let's say that I'm picking green beans. Okay. And the fresh green beans from wherever they were harvested recently took a little while to get to my grocery store. The frozen green beans were probably frozen the day they were picked. They're mm -hmm. probably fresher. Right. So I have frozen vegetables and fruits in my refrigerator and my freezer all the time. Perfect. I would go for that certainly over canned. Okay. Um, would, because of the processing of a canned mm -hmm. uh, vegetable, it's kind of swimming in the kind of liquid. sodium liquid. Yeah. Just and uh, mystery liquid. Maybe? Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> you don't really kind know. Of. Um, yeah. yeah. So frozen vegetables, I think, are a fantastic choice. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Because I know again, going back to the busy professional woman mm -hmm. who is on the road a lot and doesn't have time to get necessarily fresh everything all the time. Right. Like if I'm going to stop, frozen my is a great alternative. A great alternative. All right, yeah. perfect. Good. And not everybody gets relax like relaxes by chopping. Right. <laughs> <laughs> They're like maybe if it's already chopped and you can throw it in your <laughs> steamer. It's all good. Or maybe it relaxes them to throw something in the microwave. Like exactly. Two, exactly right. two seconds is done. Yeah, exactly. Do we have any questions from the uh, gallery? Yes. From, from our from our audience. <laughs> from our audience <laughs> today. <Come on. laughs> yes. you, you know, I I think this is very, I'm very into this type of stuff. You know, you you talked about the vegetables so that, and I just recently read something about that. Yeah. That, you know, because all the when they have to get to us, it's. Well, the there's the carbon footprint, there's Absolutely. how long does it take for a green bean to get here from California or Mexico. Mm -hmm. It takes a little time. Absolutely. And you know, I want to, I want to go back to my first question about the organic stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, because this is, this is my bath when you wish. Okay. <laughs> Think about this. You know, organic is healthier, of course, then why is it more expensive? And I guess it's because it's cheaper to put processed food out there and process chemicals, that's what the whole problem is, right? Well, it's cheaper in many respects for the farmer. For the farmer. That is non-organic. Mm -hmm. To choose the kind of easier route, the less expensive route, mm -hmm. is going the traditional way with the spray pesticides and being sure that they're, they're, the insects are away. It takes more time, it's more laborious. Right to run an organic garden. There has to be a lot more attention to, and certainly to be certified organic, there's all kinds of regulations I couldn't that's even speak right. to. But they have to meet all kinds of standards. And in doing that, that's time consuming for the farmer. It has to be a dedicated farmer that's going to throw themselves into that. And that's why and that CSI episode, <laughs> the, it, the water drained the drain yep. off, went there and he was losing a lot of money. And yeah, they ended up sure. showing other farmer. He's kind of crazy, but that's you know what, what it's about. It's kind of interesting. Watch the aside and learn. There you go. <laughs> um, but you, you know, so I mean, how if you still want to stay on the organic? I mean, is buying local, even though they're using it, is, is buying local a little bit better? Mm -hmm. Can you consider that a little bit more organic? No, it doesn't mean it's organic. It but, means it's it's fresher and it was here, and you're going to get it same day it was picked day after it was picked. So in this area, we're very fortunate. We have some phenomenal farms in this right. area. So as the spring creeps in, hopefully soon, no, yeah. and, yeah. uh, and then to our summers with all the farms that we have in this area, farm stands on the corners, the agricultural center we have in Mount Laurel, that's mm -hmm. the, the county agricultural center where they have the 
uh, the, the farmers markets. That's where your local produce and your local things are, the things that were grown here. Again, we don't have access to that in the off season too much. So um, just because it's local doesn't mean it's organic, but it means it's closer to its origin and uh, we can get it right here. And you can clean as best you can what's not organic. So we've got to kind of you got to kind of separate those two things out. Organic is one issue. Mm -hmm. Clean is different. Clean okay. eating doesn't necessarily mean you have to buy organic. You're eating foods that are closest to their natural state. That's really the important thing. So a lot of folks are um, turning to homegrown gardens mm -hmm. um, to keep that organic. You know, I'm assuming like. Um, we're using compost and stuff like right, that. That absolutely. will keep it as much, and you just want to keep the pesticides down as much as possible. Absolutely. So I, I see a lot of people that's trending and everything. Yeah. Uh, what's the next big, in your opinion? What's the next big, um, like vegetable that's out there? Like I always ask this. I have some on foodie shows and stuff, but like yeah. balsamic vinegar. Where the heck did that come from? Uh, yeah. A few years ago, <laughs> it now came it's from it, the it came, now it's used <laughs> everywhere. It came from Europe. Yeah. You know, now there's. Um, Avocado. Yeah. Avocado is a big thing. It's good for you. And I think they were just talking this morning on the news that there's a, a little, going to be a little bit of a shortage. So the panic, the guacamole panic is out there. Uh, I had avocado for breakfast today. Okay. Not. I love avocado. I put avocado on my um, egg white sandwich as nice. my fat instead nice. of another fat. Whoa. I had an egg white with tomato and avocado. That was my breakfast. Avocado replaces uh, the mandarins, actually. Yeah, it does. So, you know, do you see anything that's trending out there that's kind of new and up and coming? Well, there? I'll say for me, mm -hmm. um, the past year, I've become obsessed with Brussels sprouts for some crazy reason. Well, Brussels sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, yeah, yeah. and I cook them a bunch of different ways. And here's the thing. If you're trying something new, I'm all about trying something different. If you try it once and it's an epic fail in your family, you're probably not going to incorporate it again. Yeah. But in my book, anything that you prepare in olive oil and garlic is going to taste delicious. It's so, going to be good. Uh, so in all honesty, you saute a vegetable of any origin and I, your family's going to eat it. I've got, I, I feel very lucky and fortunate. I've got a, a, a healthy family of eaters. I've got kids that have loved spinach since they were little and eat green, green, green and uh, the other piece to that is yeah. as many colors as you can represent on your Rolls. in your 24 hours. Purples and yellows and greens and oranges and reds. But also, That's what I want you to look right. for in the produce section. Right. Give yourself combinations and you're going to get all different combinations of vitamins and nutrients, and nutrients. that way. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's also just a big indicator of what nutrients you're, you're getting, like vitamins and minerals mm -hmm. and things like that instead of, yeah. of like a gigantic multivitamin. Exactly, <laughs> exactly right. And so, anymore, that's yeah. been debated as well. So the thing to think about in terms of clean eating is if I eat something as close to its natural state, it's going to energize me. It's going to give me the nutrition that I need to work out as hard as I need to work right. out. Exactly. If I eat something that's processed, it's going to slow me down. It's going to slow my cells down. My cells have to figure out what to do with that, that foreign body basically right that I've ingested so one thing will be more energizing than the other an apple is going to give you more energy than an apple breakfast bar right or an apple pop tart yeah so, <laughs> exactly. so then that's pretty obvious right no I think and and I think though too all of the uh, kind of tips that we kind of went over if there's like a little nugget of information that you can you know incorporate into your lifestyle and it's really just about small changes i say the same thing about fitness it's the same thing with nutrition don't feel like bogged down that you have to do every single little thing that we talked about on the show today just incorporate one or two little things you're like oh yeah i can do that like shopping the perimeter of the grocery store um you know having a grocery list before you go in there um, you know, it's like the, the battlefield <laughs> in the supermarket. So that is our time for today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we'll be back next week. Until then, take your journey, change your body, find your joy. I'm Elena, the Trainer Diva, and I will see you next week. Take care.